Welcome to the hands-on session of the Metadata Broker. Uh, so uh, again, just to give you an overview of what Broker is, so Broker comes in between two connectors. Whenever you want to publish your data as a data provider, you register yourself in the Broker. And then as a data consumer, you register yourself in the connect Broker your connector into the broker and then search the broker to decide on which data set you want to have in your, uh, which data set you want to acquire. So yeah, given that, so again, I would like to share with you the agenda for the hands-on session. So first, first we would go through the uh, interactive installation uh, for the metadata broker. And for that, we need uh, to have Git, Docker, Docker Compose, OpenSSL, DAP Certificate, and uh, Postman. So once we install the metadata broker in our local machine, so we would see some sample communication to the broker. So in this scenario, Postman is acting like a demo connector. And uh, with the Postman request, we would show you how we do a communication between the broker and a connector. So this uh, includes that we would see how to get a self-description of the broker. We would also see how to register a connector into the broker. We would also see how you can register a connector, register a resource under the connector you just registered. And then you can also update the self-description of your connector. You can uh, update your uh, properties or metadata of your resource. You can query the triple store to see uh, what you have in your database. And also you can unregister a resource, unregister your connector. So with that in mind, uh, let's begin. And uh, first I would like to again go through the re prerequisites of the installation. So you should have a Git, you should have your Docker version 20.10.7 or later, your uh, Docker Compose should be 1.29.1 or later, you should have an OpenSSL installed so that you can acquire a va valid certificate signed by a trusted certification authority. You should also have a DAP certificate. And for this session, if you do not have, we have uh, one publicly available DAP certificate hosted in our Git repository. We would use that just to show you the complete installation guide. And we also have the installation guide available in our GitHub repository. Uh, we will provide the link as well, but everything we see here today would also be included in the installation guide. So don't worry if you miss something, please go through them, uh, go through the installation guide. And if you have any questions, please contact us. So let's start with the GitHub link. So uh, this is the GitHub link. Maybe I open it and show you what it looks like. So this is our GitHub page where we, here is the installation guide that I'm talking about. So whatever you see here in the steps, we would see in the session. And you also can see our contact information at the bottom. So either you can create an issue if you have any uh, problems or any bugs you find or any suggestions you can always contact us with our email address provided at the bottom of this installation site. So let's then first, uh, what we want you to do is to clone the repository. And uh, yeah, you can either take it from here or directly uh, from the um, GitHub repository, you can clone your, uh, uh, you can clone this repository and let me show you, I already did that. So I will do it the same thing with you. So we are on the same page. So this is the metadata broker open core project that I have, um, um, that I have uh, cloned in my repository. So if you can see here, I have the readme file, which is the installation guide. We host the Docker files under this uh, list of folders. So we need to go to the Docker and then the compose file and then to the broker local host. And this is the Docker compose file that we need to configure. But before that, we have few more steps to do. And uh, part of it is to have an self-signed certificate or SSL certificate. 
So uh, this is the command that you, this is uh, a command that you can prepare your certificates with. And uh, the most important part here is that we prepare the certificate and the key of the certificate as it is shown here, the name, what, what I mean by the name. So you need to, your certificate should have server.crt and your key should also be named as server.key. Otherwise your broker will not start because that's the, we follow a naming convention there. So this is uh, how the um, command will look like. Maybe what I can do, I can also show you how I prepare it if anybody has any questions. So for example, let's say uh, I'll go here and maybe I create a new folder called new start. By the way, I'm using Linux system, so it, it's not uh, like operating base, operating system base. You can also have OpenSSL in your Windows, but the commands will be same, so you can have them in your Windows machine as well. So what I will do now, I've created this folder called new cert and I will I will open a terminal. And uh, there may be uh, Marion, you can co copy the command. I think it would help me as well uh, for the open SSL part. So oh, just a second. Yeah, sure. So the 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 whole um, command Open. list. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So from this part till this part. I hope it's somehow usable. I don't know, like how MS Teams. Let's see. Let's see. I'll copy it and see if this works. If not, then it's fine too. Yes, it works. So this is the entire command. So if I go forward with it, we need to put some uh, credentials and some things. So right now it's asking for a country name. So for example, let's say we are from Germany. So DE, then we are from NRB state. I mean, these are not mandatory fields. You can or cannot put them in this process. So let me just skip through it and done. So if you see, once this command is complete, you have two files, your server.cert, the certificate and the key of the certificate, and this you need to mount in your Docker com container. So it's very important that you have them, again, just follow the naming convention and uh, mount it to your container properly. So once this step is done, uh, we go to the second step. So again, uh, the question that we need to ask uh, to all of our participants who want to install the broker, that whether you have a certificate, if not, we again uh, have our publicly available one that we have in our broker repository, we can use that. For example, the one that we have is called issbroker-keystore.jks. And we will, along with the SSL certificate, we just prepared in the previous step, and this uh, certificate TK in CKS format, we would see how we would need to configure our Docker file. So uh, let's then go to the second step. I mean, yeah, and again, as I mentioned, that uh, the folder that you will have your SSL certificate, the key, and your app certificate needs to be mounted to the Docker container. And for that, we would request you to create one specific folder. For example, cert, or like you have seen in the previous uh, steps, like new cert, whatever it is, regardless of the name, please prepare a folder and have all these files together in that um, folder. So, for example, now I have this new cert and I also already created a cert which is this one so we have the server certificate the server key and the JKS file and now what we will do we will mount this folder to our container so it recognizes uh, and uh, passes the identification pro process so 
Before uh, doing that, one thing I would like to mention here is that depending on your operating system that you're uh, deploying your broker in, a few commands will be different. And that requires the absolute path of this folder that we just created or what you see here in the window. So for example, for your windows, it could be something like C colon that slash etc slash search search. And for Linux, it could be something like uh, slash etc slash search. So please make sure that you have the absolute path correct and you put in the correct line of the Docker Compose file. So what I mean by that, I will go to the second step and rather than showing this uh, presentation slide, I will directly go to my Docker Compose file. So again, you would see your Docker files here when you clone the repo. So it goes under Docker, under Compose files, broker local host, and this is the Compose file that we need to configure to in deploy our metadata broker. I see a few other people are also joining. So if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me because we intend to make it an interactive session. And if you if you do not get any steps, please stop me again. Please raise your hands and I will address the uh, questions or the concerns. So let me now open this one, this Docker Compose file, and this is how it looks like. And we need to change three things over here. First, we need to change the path of our certificate into the volumes of the services. So we have two services here, so broker reverse proxy and broker core. And these are the two lines that concern regarding the changes. So the first line, line number six, is how you need to configure if you're using a Linux-based system. And line seven is when you're using a Windows-based system. So please put a hash in front of the command, uh, the other command, for example, if you're using a Windows laptop, please put a hash in, in line number six and line number 15, if, and please remove the command, uh, this hash uh, from line number seven and line number 16 and vice versa. So this is the general one that we're provided. Now I need to have the proper path. So what I will do again, maybe, so I go to my, so this is the, I, let me copy, sorry. So let me copy the, so this is, I need to change it like this. Slash cert, copy this, and also change it here. So now uh, this folder is mounted into the slash etc slash cert in the Docker container. And this name should be put in line um, 23 here. So the identity Java key store here first, you need to put this uh, path, which is slash etc slash cert, and then your the name of your certificate. So for us, again, as I, as I said, the name of the certificate that we're going to use is ISSC broker hyphen keystore.jks. So just please um, replace the name over here, but keep this path as it is. So this is the third uh, changes that we need to do in our Docker Compose file. So I would like to go through a few of the properties in this environment uh, part of the Docker Compose file. So for example, we are using our own Fuse key. So that is, uh, and you can use your own Fuse key if you have installed your own Fuse key, then just please use it over here. You can also mention your endpoints. And also uh, we have few other properties. For example, if you want to keep your shackle validation on, then please uh, keep this line 21 as it is. But if you want by any chance to turn off the shackle validation, then plus, please put false over here in line 21. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the hands-on session that we are not actually working with a connector, rather we are using Postman as a demo connector. So we don't have a proper DAPS token or dynamic attribute token. So for now, to see a successful communication, 
What I want to do is that to turn off this steps validation, so just put it as false. So um, then um, whenever there is an incoming message or outgoing message, broker will not ask uh, the DAP token there. But in a real scenario, when you have your uh, proper IDS connector, it will al always uh, provide you the token. And with the token, broker will verify the incoming message and accept it and give you the proper response with respect to your request message. So I think that's all. So let me go through it again. So first, we need to change the volume over here and put the absolute path of uh, my certificate folder. And also in the broker core, again, we change it here. And then in the third step, in the identity Java key store, we mentioned the uh, path for the container uh, where the certificates are mounted. And then you need to adapt the name of your Java key store. One more point I would like to mention here is that because we are now hosting the metadata registry, metadata broker uh, in our local machine, so this is uh, this is uh, the component URI as local host. But if you have other domain names, then you can use them as it is and just put it over here. And also, you need to mention the component catalog URI. So this slash connector should remain as it is. The thing that you need to change is the DNS of your, like wherever you are hosting your uh, broker. And as you can see, we not only support the uh, normal DAPs uh, uh, provided by the ISAC, you can also have your own certificate from the Omegen. And uh, that is also supported in the broker. So I would request if you want, if you already have your own DAP certificate uh, deployed, then please try to use that one as well. But other than that, our compose file is good to go. And let me save it. And then the next step would be to run the Docker file. So what I will do here is let me, okay, I think this easy solution would be to just open a new terminal in the folder. So again, to identify where my Docker file is, I go to metadata broker, I go to Docker, I go to Docker comp compose files, broker local host, and I'll open a terminal here. So now uh, what I need to do, I need to do a Docker up and see if it goes through. So, so far, this thing looks good. The log looks good. And yeah. So when, once you see that your broker code is running in port 8080, that means your broker is installed or deployed properly. And one more thing is right now I'm I am I ra ran the Docker file as it is. If you want, you can also run it in detached mode. So, for example, the way I did the Docker compose up, if I now close the terminal, my broker will turn off, like it will switch off itself. If you want to run it and in the back back end, then there is another command you can just add minus d. Let me again show you here. Although there will be a port clash, but this would be docker compose up and then minus D. So once you have this minus D, then even if you close your terminal, unless you do a docker compose down, your broker will be running. So I, I did this because we want to, if there are any errors, we want to check the logs of the broker. So I kept it without the detach mode. And now there are actually three ways to see actually that broker is running. So the first one would be to open a web browser and just write HTTPS slash localhost. Yeah. So as you can see, you have the broker, the set description of the broker. Here I wanted to do one thing because I already tested the certificates in our, already I tested it before the session. So that's why my my browser knows my certificate and want, knows how to trust it. 
what I want to do is that maybe I have a new certificate and see. So let these two and just replace them. Okay. Then I want to do a Docker Compose down. Okay. Okay. Again, let me do a Docker Compose up. So, so far, things are looking good. Yeah, so my broker is supposed to run. Yes, that's what I wanted to show you. So for the first time, when we are deploying the broker with our own certificate, our browser will not recognize and will ask whether you want to uh, trust this uh, uh, certificate. So what we do, don't we do, we go to advance, we go to accept the risk and continue. And from now on, how, whenever you are using the same SSL certificate, your browser will always know that this is the broker and I would trust it. So I would like to show you one more thing. So if you remember in the morning session, we saw that all the IDS messages go through our reverse proxy. So we just did a get, get um, our broker just received a get message. And if you can see the broker reverse proxy responses it and see that, okay, I got it and you are passing through me. So that's the first step, and this is the one of the three possible ways that we can see that our broker is running. And now I would like to switch to our Postman collection and actually show you how we can use the Postman itself to retrieve the broker, to register our broker, and so on. So Marion, maybe if you can share the Postman link, and also I will show you. The post. Yes. I'm done. Yes. So, uh, what you all you need to do is just import it, and we've provided you a link. So just copy paste it, and then continue, and then this collection that we we are going to show you here in the hands-on session would be uh, the same as we see in the hands-on session. So now let's start with the one. So first of all, we have this get. And by the way, this message is our multi-part. So, uh, and uh, yeah, so let's start with the get. So the simplest way is to just have the get as a request and also say where your broker is hosted. And once you send it, you would see the similar response what we saw in the web browser. So this is your broker host, bro broker, the self description of your broker, and and so on. Not only this, so this this two steps. So the first one through the browser and through this get just directly goes through to your broker. You can also use your I different IDS messages from the information model from IDS. And to retrieve the cell description through a specific IDS message is this one, the post, local host, and infrastructure. One thing I would like to mention here again, the endpoint to register your connector or query anything with any IDS message is infrastructure. So regardless of your URL, just write it here, then put a splash, and then just put infrastructure. This is one thing. The other one is when we may or may not need a payload, but we always need a header when we are using a form data for multi-part. And to retrieve the cell description, we don't need a payload, so we only have the header. And if I look at the value of the header, then you would see this is a description request message. So this would be coming from your connector, let's say, as a description request message to the broker, and there will be a response from the broker with its cell description. So let me have a let me send it, and hopefully this works. So yes. So now this is the description response message, whereas the header was description request message, and you would see the same uh, 
properties or metadata that we saw in, in our broker self description. So this is a broker uh, with a graph persistent layer. It has a resource catalog, it has data resources and so on. Now, one thing again, which is very important that in the real scenario, you need to have a DAPS token or a DAT. Right now, since we have turned off the DAPS, turned off the DAPS validation in our um, Docker Compose file, we don't have any uh, problem. I will sh show you what kind of problem I mean at the end of the session. So when you have your proper connector or you have turned on your DAPS validation, then in this line, this token value, instead of this three dots, you need to provide the token. So if you remember in the morning session, there was this string with E and few numbers and letters. So generally the token looks like that. So whatever token you are receiving from the connector itself, it would be saved here or passed here. And then your broker would know, okay, this is a valid uh, idea request coming to my broker. So these are the three ways that we can get a self description of the broker. Now let's start with uh, installing a, a connector. And to in first of all, to install a connector, you definitely need to have a header and a payload. Both of them are very important. So, and then the request type would be a post and the URL would be your DNS of your, or URL of your broker and then slash infrastructure. This, this slash infrastructure should not change at all. Otherwise your messages will not parse through. So now let's have a look at the header. So we have the header over here. There are a few things that are important and we need to remember. So uh, first of all, this header indicates that what kind of uh, message this is. So this is a connector update message. So whenever broker receives a connected update message, it recognizes that, okay, it, what it does is it takes the information in the message, it checks whether uh, this connector already exists in, uh, in the triple store. If not, then it handles it as a new request with a new connector and register the connector itself. This connected update message is also used whenever you are trying to, for example, let's say update some self description of your connector, which we also will see in the next steps. Then, and, it, and if it sees that the connector is there already and there are a few changes, then it would consider it as a update, updating the connector. And then it would change the properties that are different in the message itself. So this connected update message you would see in two steps whether you're registering a connector or updating a connector. So, and the important part is that now you need to set your ID of your connector. So there are three places that you need to make sure that you use the same URL for your connector or same ID for the connector. For example, in the header, you have the issuer connector and, and here, this is the ID that I want to set as the issuer connector. So if I, if this message goes through successfully, and if this test.connector.de slash my connector is not in the broker's triple store, it will create it, and then it would tag it as the uh, my connector. And again, you need to have the token in the payload, but this is just the header. So in the header, you mention your ID and make sure this, this is same for your payload as well. So if you see now it is my connector and if I go to my payload, then I hope this is visible enough. You can also copy it in a text pad and just copy it maybe. Yeah, so this is the payload. And what it says is that the ID is as we saw in the header. So this is the same connector, otherwise broker will throw an error. And the type that is mentioned here is it's a base connector. And also then it has its own description, default endpoints, other properties, and so on. One thing, when you're registering a connector, you can also register a resource within the connector. So that happens inside this property, which is called resource catalog. And then inside resource catalog, you have offered resources and there you can set the metadata of your resources and 
set all the properties that you want to show or all the metadata that you want to show, uh, you want to save in your metadata registry. But for now, I'm going to focus on the self description of the connector and how to register it. So this is what it looks like right now. Again, it, you should have a token. I think I need to find it, but it definitely should be here somewhere. The token that you need to put, maybe. Yeah, I mean, let, I mean let me copy it in a bit. But. So, so let me see if actually we have the token here. So, so the token is turned off, so it doesn't matter whether you have it or not. So close without saving. So right now, let's send a message, and hopefully this would be a successful message. OK, so we've received something. How do we know that this is a successful message? We know it by the type of the message called message process notification message. So if it's a rejected message, then this, I, this type would be changed to reject message, I think. We can also show you later on. But if you receive a message process notification message, that means whatever request or IDS message you have sent to the broker, it accepted and it processed it and it is there in the broker. And one, one thing uh, what I want to show you is this is the location where your broker is uh, hosting the connector. So this is the ID of the connector. By the way, you cannot just click on it and uh, do a get because it's not a valid URI. But this is the ID of your connector that broker just registered. So I don't need it, so don't save it. And it has few, again, the few other things that as a self description of the connector itself. So now what I want you to, so I'm saying that this connector is registered. Now, how do we actually know that this connector is registered? Let me show you a sample query. So this is the query message. Again, you need to do a post to the proper URL with the slash infrastructure. And then you, you need your header, which says that this is a query message. And in your payload, just put your Sparkle query. So for example, right now, I want to get all the triples from my triple store. So I, this is the simplest query that you can get. Select subject, predicate, object, where subject and predicate and object as it is. So if I send this message, then now this is not a message process notification message. When we are querying the broker, the response comes as a result message. And when we get the result message, as you can see, I hope my window is big enough. So this is the response. So this is the response. As you can see, this is my connector. This is the test connector. This is the description of the connector. This is the test connector. And it also has other things, for example, like the resource catalog. And this is what does what this means is this is the ID of your connector, and this is the ID of your resource catalog, and so on. So there are a few things you can show from here. But right now, this is fetching everything that is available in your uh, Physici Triple Store. If you want to get a specific, uh, just the information regarding the connector, then I have also prepared one Sparkle query. Mayan, if you can just copy the second one, and in the meantime, I'll show you show it in this window. So it, as you can see here now, I'm specifying please fetch all the all the triples that are related to the base connector. So if I copy and paste it here, then again I'm getting a result message, and then this is. The response. So now we only get the information related to the base connector. We do not get resource catalog. We do not get offered resources. We do not get resources itself. Just the self description that is related to this ID of the connector, which is a base connector itself. So again, you can play around with the Sparkle query and just get whatever you want to get. So this is again just a glimpse of how 
our front end actually works when it is based on the Sparkle query. So it, we prepare Sparkle queries to fetch the metadata and show it in the uh, front end. So this is one of the ways we, we do it in the front end. So right now we have registered a connector successfully. Now, again, as I said, if you want, you can go ahead and change the cell description of your connector. For example, let's say you modified your uh, connector, you want to add the new date, or you want to change the description of your connector, whatever it is. So we will follow through the second message, which is connector update message. By the way, this is exactly the same as I shown you here in the connector registration. So this header is as it is that we saw in the previous message, which kind of uh, tells you the which connector it needs to change. So for example, if you see the sure connector is still as my connector and the affected connector is still as my connector, this is the header. And if you can see, this is the connector update message again. So right now this would be acting as updating the, uh, the connector itself. And so this is the header. And for example, in the body, uh, let's say what I want to change. Let's say I want to have a different description of my resource. So for example, this is the line that I changed. I prepared it already. So you can play around as you want. So in the previous query, if I go here, you would see that the description says, this is a test connector for PlugFest. Now I want to change it. So in this message, what I did, in this part, in the value of the description, I changed it to this line. This is the change in the description of the connector. And you also need to mention the ID of your connector, which is here. So if you ch change it to something else, then your broker will throw an error, which I will show you in the next step. But let's see whatever we have right now goes through and I can see the changes. So if I do the send, okay. So this message went through. So we got a message process notification. And again, this is the exact same location that the connector was hosted. So visually, you don't see any difference over here. But if you go and query the connector again, sorry, the broker again, you would see the changes reflected. So again, we have the result message. And here, now the description has changed to this is this is change in the description of the connector. So this is just one sample of how we can update the self description of a connector. You can go and play around and change whatever you want to change. You, you can add new properties, you can delete pro properties and so on. So this is how a broker updates the self description of the connector. So uh, before, uh, showing you the unregistration of the connector because I, I want to do it at the, at the end because if I unregister or delete a connector from the broker, then all the, all the resources that are hosted inside the connector or all the information would be gone. So right now I would like to go to the next step. But first of all, maybe I want, what I want to show how the rejection message looks like. So for example, let's say I change the name of the connector and let's say it goes through. So as you can see, it is a rejection message because the ID that is there in the header or that is already in the, con in the metadata broker does not match in the payload. That's why we get a rejection message. And if you can see the issuing connector of this message does not match the connector URI in the payload. So. This is how broker knows that whatever you are saying, sending as a message is valid or not. So let me shift back to what I had here. Okay. So uh, let me go to the second step, which is the resource uh, registration. Let's say, no, let's, let's start with the resource update. So as I mentioned in this uh, mes uh, message, you can also, Whole, like save a resource when you're registering a connector. So now I want to sh show something here. So this is the payload of the connector registration message. And where I want to go is that I want to go to the resource catalog. So this is the description endpoint. Yeah, here. 
So this is the resource catalog. This is the offered resource. And this is the ID of my resource. So in the connected registration message, I also registered a resource under this URL, URI. And this is my first resource. And there are a few information there. So now I can also go back and can change the information for this resource. And uh, we, what we do, we go to this resource update and it contains the resource update message. So again, this is acting as updating the resource itself. And there you need to mention two things. First, the ID, proper ID of your affected resource and also the exact issuer connector. So if you set something else over here, which is not valid or any other connector, then this message will not go through. So this is the header part. Then you need to make sure that is proper. And in the payload, again, sorry about that. In the payload, again, you need to make sure that you have the ID as the proper ID, and then you can go ahead and change whatever you want to change and see if the changes are reflected. So let's say I send this message and see if this one works. So again, we get a message process notification. So whatever changes you included in the payload did work. And if you can see, this is the location where the resource is hosted. That means that again, this is the ID of your connector. And this is the ID of your resource catalog. And this is the ID of your resource. So resources are, are set inside the resource catalog. And resource catalog is set inside the connector. And this is the corresponding IDs. Now, the question comes that whether my one connector can have multiple resources. Yes, they can have. They can host multiple number of resources under the resource catalog. And we would see how we can register a new connector. But before going into that, I want to show another Sparkle query. So again, Marion, please copy and paste this one. So what it does, it would show you the list of resources that are there in the connector. So if I send it through, I get a result message. And right now, my connector only has one resource. And this is, if you, if you remember, that's the exact ID what we saw in the resource update or resource registration message. So right now, my connector has only one. And let's say now I want to add a new re resource to this connector. So this is the connector registration message. If you go through it, then again, you would see the type of this IDS message is resource update message. Again, like connector update message, resource update message can act as registering a resource if it is not there in the broker. And if it is there in the broker, it will check whether you have changed something and then update the resource itself. So once this is correct, Again, we need to make sure that we have the proper affected resource. And here, because we are registering a new connector, so this affected resource ID would be the new one that you want to set uh, as. So for example, I have set it as my second resource, but your issuer connector should be as the URI of your connector. This should match definitely. So this is the header of my message. And we have to make sure that this ID in the header inside the affected resource matches in the payload. What I mean by that here is that if you see in this line, this is as this is the ID of the resource. So once all these parameters are matching and as it should supposed to be, and if I send this post request to our broker, I hope I get a message process notification message. Yes, so I get a message process notification message. And at the end of the message, you would see exactly where this resource is hosted. As, as you can see, this ID is not changed because it's the same resource catalog. This is the same re connector, but the connect ID of your resource has changed. To show you that I'm actually telling you the truth and not bluffing, let's run the um, query again. 
and I should be seeing two resources yet. So now this uh, Sparkle query re returns two, re two triple, and that means that we have now two resources hosted under the connector. So, so far what we have seen, we have seen how to connect, register a connector, how to update the self description of the connector, how to update your resource, how to up, add a new resource or register a new resource and how to query them to verify that that's actually how the triple, like your data, uh, metadata is hosted in the triple store. Now we can also delete resources under each connector. So again, I will not, I will start with the resource delete message. And because it's a deletion process or unregistration process, you do not need a payload. You only need to have a proper header and then your resource would be deleted. So this is the post request, which will be deleting one of the resources. So in the header, if you see, this is a resource unavailable message type. So this IDS message represents that I want to delete my resource. And the important information here is that you need to have the token because you do not have a payload. So your token comes in the header. You need to have a valid token. And the two most important things are, first, you need to mention the proper ID of your affected resource, which affected resource you want to delete. So for example, let's say I want to delete my second resource that I just registered in the previous step. And you also need to mention the proper URI of, or ID of your connector. So this should be my connector. So let's say I change the name over here and now it's resources which there are, which does not exist in the broker. If I send it, I should be getting a rejection message. So if you see, the requested resource could not be found. Now let's say what happens if I, I think it's changed, okay. So now it's fine. If I give a wrong URI for the connector, so, and if I want to send it, again, I'm getting a rejection message and you would see in the response that the connector from which you are trying to sign off a resource was not found or is not active. So just make sure that you, if you are willing to delete a resource, just make sure that these uh, uh, fields are filled properly. And if everything is fine and I send this post request, I get a process notification message. And because it does not add anything, it does not have any other responses. So to actually see that this resource is deleted from in the uh, triple store, I again run this query, which gets the list of the resources. So if I send it, I should be seeing only one. Yes, now my connector only hosting one resource. So this is how we can delete, update, and add a resource. Now, uh, before unregistering a connector, I would also like to show you the sample spark of query, which fetches all the information of the resource. So Marion, if you kindly just copy paste the last query and let's just have it over here. Sorry, I think I copied the wrong one. So copy. And if I send it, again, I get a result message. And this contains all the information for all the resources that are there in the triple store. So this was so far uh, related to all the connector updates, registering connector resource uh, update, up, uh, registration and deletion. Now I want to show you the last step, which is how to unregister or delete a connector from your broker. So again, this would be a post request. You need to have the proper URL. And since this is a deletion or an unregistration, you only need a header, you don't need a payload. And in your header, if you see the message type is connector unavailable message. And 
you need to have the proper ID for the issuer connector, and you also need to provide the token in real scenario. But now, as I mentioned, yes, we have turned off the DAB validation. So once this is done, let's say I want to uh, send it. Let's say what happens there. So it's a message process notification, no response. But how do we know that my connector is unregistered from the triple store? So to do that, I would like to request you to go to like the basic query, the first one, which is this one, and it should be empty because so far we just registered one connector and resources, and at the end we deleted that connector itself. If I send the basic one, you would see we get a rejection message. Because it's a rejection message, because the index is empty, your query could not be evaluated. So when your index is empty or your triple store does not host any connector itself, you won't get a result message. Rather, you would get a rejection message saying that your index is empty. So this is how we can confirm that all the messages that went through worked with this uh, Sparkle query. Again, this is just a sample. This is not an hard uh, core requirement of the messages. So you can have your own JSON LD, you can add more properties. And actually, in the real scenario, it depends on the connector. So whatever we are seeing here in the header and the payload, it would be connect coming from a real connector. And whatever you configure on your connector end would be reflected and come to the broker. So this is so far what. Uh, Broker actually works how, and all this uh, again, because this is the Sparkle query. When we have a, if you also get the front end, you could also see it in the front end. But right now, I'm just showing you how the Sparkle query and how this IDS messages work. So, this is the multi part form of the communication between a broker and, in our case, a demo connector to Postman. And I want to show you how broker responses when we have turned on the DAP validation. And to show you that with, without a proper token, broker will not accept any message. So to do that, again, I would like to go back to my Docker Compose file. And here I want to turn it on. Sorry, it should be true. So once this is true, I need to redeploy my broker. So, and again, just to give you a, a hint, so whenever we are throwing some Sparkle queries, it goes through the physics. If you see, whenever we are receiving a new message, it goes through our reverse proxy. So that's how our overall implementation works. If you remember the, the image that I showed in the morning session. So let me first do a uh, Docker Compose down. You can either Control C if you are running it without the detach mode, or you can just write Docker Compose down if you are running it in like this, like in detach mode. Again, I want to show you the argument. So if if you ran your broker with this Docker Compose minus T, that means it's in detach mode. Then just do a Docker Compose down. Otherwise, just Control C would work. So. Now I want to turn on my broker. Okay, so let me see if maybe I see it through the Postman collection. Just a second. So let me show you again the self description of the broker. So yes, my broker is running. Now let's try to do a connector registration message. Now again, if you remember, we do not have a token here. So and the DAP validation is turned on in broker end, so it should result in a rejection message. But let's see if it actually does. So.
Yes, so we get a rejection message. And the reason for that rejection message is error verifying token. So whatever you have put in the property of the token uh, field, it does not verify that it's a valid incoming message because it's not coming from a, a proper DAP certification process. So the broker just rejects the message and says error verifying token. So this message, if this message doesn't go through, then our query should again be empty. So again, it is a rejection message because it is not recognizing the token itself. So this is all for uh, today's hands-on session. This is what uh, we planned on doing. So hopefully, at least till whatever part we have shown today, you are successful to do that as well. If not, if you face any problems, then please feel free to contact us. We would be happy to help you 